Yeah, why a full-length ballet of Frida? Um, well, I got to know uh, the work of Frida and the person of Frida by watching a movie uh, like 17 years ago with Selma Hayek. And uh, I was amazed by uh, the woman. I mean, how she's a survivor. She's a feminist, like me. Uh, she's an artist. She's, uh, you know, compassionate. But at the same time, she is, um, you know, without any compromise and very direct in her work. And um, yeah, she also fought for the identity of Mexican people. And I think as a choreographer uh, and a mixed race myself, a mestiza like her, uh, I've been, you know, learning with age to accept uh, that I'm part Latina from Colombia and part European from Belgium. Uh, so I feel related to her through that. And um, so in 2016, when I was asked by Tamara Rojo to make, you know, a ballet about a figure, a female figure from uh, literature and uh, history, uh, you know, I, I would just, the words, the name Frida just came up all the time. And so I presented it to her and for her it was good news because she loved Frida. And, um, and I felt like 10 days before the premiere, I felt that it, it was just too short, 45 minutes, to get through the journey of who she was and what happened to her and how she felt and then translated it, all that pain and drama. So, yeah, I went to Tamara 10 days before the show and I said, I think it should be a full length. And she was like, well, let me see and talk to my staff. And then it just never happened. And so when, uh, you know, Ted Branson said, so I want you to do a a full length here, which one would you want to do? And so I said, well, my dream is, uh, is Frida Kahlo. And I feel that, um, yeah, explaining to an audience or showing a portrait of this uh, incredible woman would also allow to uh, appreciate her work more and, uh, and be an example of how, you know, someone transforms so much drama and pain into art. And the art itself is not always, you know, aesthetically beautiful but very compelling to what its message is and its translation. There's a lot of poetry of how she translated her emotion into these paintings and therefore André Breton sh thought that she was a surrealist but she always said um, I, I just paint my you know my truth my uh, my reality I'm not surrealist at all who usually you surrealist are inspired by uh, dreams and hypnological images. And she said, I just, you know, draw my emotions. And nowadays it is called actually, uh, I think it's called magical, sur uh, magical realism is what her style is being defined. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, as a, as a storyteller, as a choreographer, um, I want to search new, new stories. I feel that the art form uh, should do a little bit more effort to come with new stories. I'm sometimes jealous at Hollywood that gets all these new movie, movies and stories. And, and I feel that, you know, the classical ballet, we're a little stuck with the 15 big ballets of the, the classical canon. And so, you know, I'm trying to, to bring with Frida a new story to the repertoire. And um, yeah, I mean, the Dutch National Ballet lends itself so greatly to it because you have the classical side, but at the same time, because of their uh, tradition of Hans van Maan and, and you know, um, the other choreographers here, they can also morph and move very well uh, in a contemporary uh, way. So um, yes, I'm really happy to, to be given that opportunity also as a female choreographer to uh, talk about a woman that I find very, yeah, very special. Um, so yeah, one of the characters that we had in London was uh, uh, Diego Rivera and will be his role as, you know, the husband but also a painter, an artist, will be developed much more in this version. We're going to see and we're going to show that he's also an artist and that he paints big murals. We're going to have, instead of four skeletons, we're going to have 17 skeletons. Um, and there's also a role that I wanted to explore and develop more, that is the role of the deer. Because uh, at the time with Broken Wings, the deer only arrived at the very end of the piece. And I feel that, you know, she painted that whenever she felt lonely uh, in a big city or, you know, wound, like a wounded animal, she would paint that deer. So I thought every time she's lonely, the deer will be there as an alter ego and try to console her and to, you know, give her solace and, and cheer her up. But at the same time, as a mirror, will mirror the pain that she's feeling physically. 
So the rehearsal that you just saw is actually scene 19, where we open the blue cube. Now you saw it with uh, another cube side, and the deer is completely wounded uh, inside that cube. And then we roll in uh, Frida on a wheelchair, which is going to be a tiny little black cube. Uh, so those two characters are be, definitely are going to take more uh, space and uh, telling. And I feel that, you know, her work and her life, there's so much, you know, operatic drama and tragedy that uh, it lends itself really well for a visual art like ballet. So we are going to use that poetry and bring it to life. Uh, we decided to have two cubes so that we have more um, sites that can open. Um, the designs are still made by Dievke van Rij. She's signing for the costumes and the sets. We're adding much more. So in, we just had the cubes at the time and now we have, you know, red umbilical cords coming down. We have two huge 10 meters long spine coming down. Um, we've got different kinds of flowers also coming down. Uh, what else do we have? Um, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, when I thought of, of how do you extend a one-act ballet to a two-act, so the first act will be 52 minutes long, the second act will be 46 minutes, um, you have to take it all apart. And it was really nice to actually see the one act and, and, and feel what it is that you're missing or to understand the drama. So you, I was missing the family and the, you know, the relationship with her father who made her discover painting and who encouraged her so many times. I missed the, the, you know, the relationship with her sister that when Diego in the second act cheats on her with her sister, well, in Broken Wings, it was just a woman in a green dress. Now we will know that it's the sister, that it's a family ties and that it hurts much more. Um, we're going to show as well, I felt that we had to show, so in the Broken Wings, um, Diego was the one, you know, uh, promiscuous and philandering and, you know, having the ladies around him. But actually, she was made of the same wood. She had also extramarital affairs and will show that, that she'll have, you know, I think affairs. I think what, you know, when you read with who she'd had uh, relationships, it, were, it was, you know, mostly other artists. She was really inspired and attracted to other artists. So we're going to show that and we're also going to show her, you know, uh, woman on woman affairs and um, so that she doesn't come out too much as a victim of, you know, the bad guy being Diego Rivera. I mean, he wasn't an angel for sure, but she was very much also, you know, taking her freedom to explore relationships on different levels with people. Because, um, you know, she loved lives and she loved people. So, uh, yes, this is going, you know, we had to take everything apart and then see um, how dramatically we would build the piece. And what is very important when you build a piece, it's also the rhythm. So I felt that in Broken Wings, it went just a little too fast to feel. So now I'm giving myself more time where she's all alone on stage so that we feel that she's, you know, a lot's happened to her, but she was also a lot bedridden and at home alone and out of, you know, boredom, she started painting. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's nice to, to add that element that I felt was missing. The music still by Peter Salem, he just added, you know, 50 minutes of music. <laughs> 
amazing. I love his uh, melodic lines and I love the themes that he chooses for the character. So that's been like a present, literally. Um, and then for the characters, I chose uh, Maya Mahatelli as a first cast. And then uh, Nordic Georgian dancer Salome Levarashlivi. I don't know if I'm saying it right, probably not. And as a third uh, cast of uh, Frida, I chose a very young girl called Riho Sakamoto. She's 21 years old and she is amazing. And so it's nice to see how they feed of each other. And for the main characters of Diego, I chose dancers so we don't have Eric Mukhamidov. He really, this time, put his point shoes in the closet and is never coming back on stage. <laughs> That's what he said to me. Um, uh, we chose James uh, Stout. And as a second cast, is going to be Arthur Shesterikov. Um, so yes, those are the main characters. And we're at the beginning. We have two weeks and two days in the studio to make the piece. And we have one week on stage, so it's very short. And, uh, you know, we hope that the muses and the gods and everybody is there with us to, you know, because it's, they're very fast. Maya is really fast in, in taking. She has this amazing technique, but it's not just about a technique. So from the moment that she has the, the quality of the movements and the musicality, then we can talk about, don't forget what and who you're portraying and that, you know. So it's, uh, I try to work as chronologically as possible so that she understands the drama when she's going to be tired. Because, yeah, I made the piece of Broken Wings in nine weeks, 45 minute piece. And this piece, I've got to make it in three weeks. And it's an hour and a half piece. So it's a challenge and I'm ready for it. <laughs> Thank you. 